My name is Felix Pang and I'm representing the state of Hawaii with my project entitled Optimal Pairings of Locally Isolated Bacteria for Maximum Hydrocarbon Bioremediation Efficiency. Around the world, oil spills are a huge environmental and economic problem. A lot of this damage that they cause arises from their constituent hydrocarbon compounds which can be either aromatic or long chain. These hydrocarbon compounds are typically difficult to degrade, have a long environmental residence time, and are toxic to the surrounding flora and fauna. Traditionally, we've approached degrading these compounds through methods such as combustion, skimming, and chemical dispersal. However, a lot of these methods are either cost inefficient or result in even more toxic byproducts as a result of incomplete degradation. Relatively more recently, the focus has shifted onto the use of bioremediation which is the use of bacteria or other microorganisms that can naturally metabolize these compounds. However, the big drawback in bioremediation is in its efficiency. A solution to this problem may lie in bioaugmentation, which is what I tested in my project. I isolated, sequenced, and identified 12 different bacteria from two sample sites that I took at Hilo Harbor in East Hawaii. Using these bacteria individually to represent simple bioremediation and in combinations to represent bioaugmentation, I tested for growth and degradation of catechol using colorimetric methods at 600 nanometer and 630 nanometer wavelengths respectively. I found that two of the combinations in particular, one of them was a Pseudomonas unidentified species and a Pseudomonas putida, the other was a Serratia rubidea and a Pseudomonas putida. These two had the highest overall efficiency of degradation as calculated by dividing the amount of catechol degraded by the amount of change in optical density or growth. From these results, we can conclude that by putting bacteria together and utilizing that community aspect of different bacteria, we can really enhance the rate of degradation and the efficiency of degradation relative to the amount of growth and impact on the surrounding environment. While these results may not yet be directly applicable to oil spills, this study serves as a stepping stone on the way to making bioremediation a more primary means of combating oil spills. So ultimately, we can look to bioaugmentation and community interaction as a key to making bioremediation more accessible and more efficient.